Hello everyone, my name is Sean and welcome to my channel where I talk about languages and the people who speak them. A few months ago I put out a poll asking which of these three languages I should be learning over the course of the following two weeks, and you all overwhelmingly voted for Greenlandic. So here we are, and we're only like five months late. Really sorry about that. More on that later. Either way, here we finally are, and today we're talking about the Greenlandic language, also known as Kalajisut. Greenlandic is native to Greenland, the world's largest island and one of the constituent countries that make up the Kingdom of Denmark. It has about 55,000 speakers, it's part of the Inuit branch of the Eskimo Aleut language family, and it's an ergative absolute of language, which makes it incredibly different to any Indo-European language, which makes it incredibly difficult for me to learn. And we'll go more in depth on all of this in a bit. Now the thing about Greenland is that everyone knows about it, as in most people in at least the Western world would have at least heard of it. But at the same time, not many people will be able to tell you much about it. And that really bums me out, because Greenland is awesome and people should pay more attention to it. And to be able to get the full picture, we're going to have to establish a timeline by going a few thousand years back. But we're going to breeze through it. So the earliest humans to have lived in Greenland were the various pre-Inuit tribes. In most research papers you'll find the term Paleo-Eskimo, but it's kind of been falling out of use in recent years. But either way, they migrated all the way from Siberia around 2500 BC. Then we super fast forward a few thousand years of various pre-Inuit cultures popping up and disappearing entirely, with even a brief period of a few hundred years when Greenland was mostly uninhabited, and we get to around 700 AD, when the last of these pre-Inuit cultures would flourish once more, the late Dorset culture. Meanwhile, on the opposite end of the continent, around 1000 AD in what is today Alaska, the Thule people begin their migration eastward, eventually reaching Greenland around the 1300s. These are the true ancestors of all Inuit, as well as the modern-day Greenlandic people. The Thule people quickly dominate all of Greenland and northern Canada, while the Paleo-Inuit tribes mentioned previously eventually reach the end of their path and die out, and just, we don't really know that much about them. Interestingly enough, allegedly, modern Greenlanders, and to an extension old Thule people, have genetically zero in common with any of the previously mentioned pre-Inuit tribes. A study in 2014 confirmed that there was no DNA match with any of the ancient peoples inhabiting Greenland a few thousand years earlier. Which is very strange and unusual considering the fact that they sort of shared the same landmass for hundreds or thousands of years. According to Danish scientist Eske Vilerslev, who produced my favorite quote on this channel so far, Almost in all other cases where we look back in the past and we see people meeting each other, they might be fighting with each other, but normally they actually have sex with each other as well. For some reason, this just didn't happen. A travesty. Yet at the same time, in native Greenlandic folklore, there are many tales and legends of the so-called Tuni, the first inhabitants, who apparently were taller and stronger with the muscularity of polar bears, the stories say. A Tuni man could lift a thousand pound seal on his back or drag a whole walrus, but despite their superior strength and size, the Tuni were shy. They were easily put to flight and it was seldom heard that they killed others. Through this, in the same article, Eske Vilislev says another very interesting thing which I just gotta share with you. I would certainly in the future pay much more attention to oral traditions among indigenous people because they could really guide us into understanding where are the interesting problems to be investigated scientifically, which is so true. When doing research in literally any field, scientific or otherwise, see what the natives have to add. Even if it's all legends and folk tales not based on empirical evidence or the modern scientific method, these people have been here for countless generations and know the land better than anybody else, and we can really learn a thing or two from them, or at least have them guide us in the right direction. Anyway, meanwhile on the opposite side of Greenland, Norse Icelanders and Norwegians begin settling the southwestern part of the island in the year 986. There are some accounts that the Norse interacted with the Thule people and even other native groups of eastern North America over the years, whether for trade or conflict. The Norse called them Skrælings. There are actually accounts of interactions from both sides, which may have influenced a bunch of legends and folk tales about each other, which is pretty cool. Then, in 1263, Greenland becomes part of Norway. In 1397, it became part of the Kalmar Union. And then by the 15th century, presumably due to a series of really rough winters and a bunch of infighting, the Norse settlements just vanish, lost contact with the mainland, and forgotten about for like 200 years, leaving only the Inuit. And finally, in 1721, the first Danish settlement in present-day Nuuk, the capital of Greenland, begins to be settled. And from then on until today, Greenland has mostly, save for a few hiccups along the way, been a part of the Danish realm. 
Since then, until the middle of the 20th century, the Danish language and culture were definitely being imposed upon the native Greenlanders, as is standard practice with every colonial power, as we've covered plenty of times on this channel before. Fast forward to 1953, and Greenland becomes fully integrated into the Kingdom of Denmark, gains representation in Parliament, and Greenlanders become Danish citizens. However, this also meant that Denmark was now doubling down on its so-called de-Greenlandification policies. Danish was promoted to the exclusive language of all official matters, most media in Danish, and many Greenlandic children were sent to boarding schools in Denmark, which led them to lose ties to Greenland. At the same time, many Greenlanders fought back hard in these policies. And now it's 1970s, and the independence movement is at its highest. And wouldn't you know it, but in 1979, Greenland managed to achieve home rule, and mostly allowed to set its own internal policies. In 2008, Greenland gained even more autonomy, gained self-rule, and in June 2009, Greenlandic actually became the sole official language of Greenland. Which is crazy. This makes Greenlandic a unique example of an indigenous language of the Americas that is recognized by law as the only official language of a semi-independent country. How cool is that? Like, Danish is still of course very widely known and is used amongst the population in various contexts, but Greenlandic is actually the sole official language. That's quite the achievement and it blows my mind. Like, look at these signs for example. Greenlandic is first and is prioritized and only then Danish. Today there are movies and shows in Greenlandic. There's radio and newspapers. All public signs are in Greenlandic. This is what Greenlandic Wikipedia looks like. And this is what a Greenlandic website asking you to confirm cookies in Greenlandic looks like. There are many really awesome bands that sing in Greenlandic which you should definitely check out. You can even take Greenlandic courses abroad in Denmark if you live there. And so much more. It's just, it's such a vibrant language. Anyway, that was a terribly oversimplified summary of Greenland's history, but that was just a warm up for the main course of the video. The language itself. First, let's quickly listen to an actual native speaker of Greenlandic speak the language. As mentioned, Greenlandic is a part of the Eskimo Aleut language family and is related to other Inuit languages across northern Canada and Alaska, such as Inuktitut, for example. However, when we look at Greenland on this map, you'll notice there isn't just one language shown, but rather three. Why is that? Well, there are generally considered to be three dialects of Greenlandic, and they are quite divergent and not fully mutually intelligible, so they are sometimes considered to be three separate languages. The one considered to be the official language of Greenland is West Greenlandic, also known as Kalashisut. It's spoken in the capital city of Nuuk, as well as most of the western and southern coasts. West Greenlandic could be subdivided even further into four additional subdialects. This one is Inuktun, also known as Avanel Suagniutu. It's spoken in and around the town of Konok one of the northernmost inhabited places on Earth. The Inuktun variety is considered to be the most conservative of the three and is the one closest to Inuktitut in Canada. And this one is East Greenlandic, also known as Tunumit Ogaasiad. It's spoken in the eastern part of Greenland, mainly in and around the towns of Tosilok and Itokoltoumit. It's considered to be the most innovative of the three varieties of Greenlandic and the one most difficult to understand for speakers of the other two. There are about 55,000 total speakers of Greenlandic as a whole, of which about 800 to 1000 ish speak Inuktun and about 3000 to 3500 ish speak East Greenlandic. Interestingly enough, there are about 52,000 people who identify themselves as ethnically Greenlandic, which means that there is actually a few thousand out there who aren't ethnically Greenlandic who speak the language, most of whom are immigrants from Denmark and other Nordic countries, which is pretty neat. Greenlandic is written using a modified version of the Latin script consisting of just 18 letters, with the rest being used only in loan words. From 1851 until the orthographic reform of 1973, Greenlandic was written using a complex orthography developed by missionary Samuel Kleinschmidt, using loads of accents and being rather inconsistent. But then after the reform it was somewhat simplified to bring it closer to the spoken form. And that's the way that it is today. Greenlandic has a relatively small phonemic inventory. Three vowels, A, E, U, although in certain cases which are quite common, the E changes to an E and the U changes to an O. There's also 15 consonants, with the rest being used only in loanwords. However, Greenlandic also has three special geminids. 
Gemination, by the way, is when you have two of the same letter in a row, essentially doubling it, and sometimes creating a different sound. They are the double G, pronounced H, a harder version of the H, sort of like the H in Loch Ness. There's also the double R, pronounced H, an even harder version of the H, heard commonly in Hebrew and Arabic, and the double L, pronounced H, heard commonly in Welsh. And finally, we arrive at the grammar, which is definitely terrifying, but it's terrifying in a good way. Sort of like a very complex board game, which takes you hours to understand the rules for, but once you learn how to play, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Now, the three main reasons why I think that Greenlandic is an incredibly difficult language for Indo-Europeans to learn is it's polysynthetic, it's ergative absolutive, and it lacks a system of grammatical tense. Sort of. What does all of this mean? English is mostly an analytic language, which means that the relationship between words in a sentence is conveyed through particles, prepositions, word order, etc., leading to a regular sentence having separate units of words put together in a sequence. Greenlandic is polysynthetic, and instead makes excessive use of suffixes and basically just glues everything together into a massive sentence word. There's still a logical sequence and order, but these aren't separate words, rather they are inseparable morphemes. What's more interesting, in my opinion, is that in language like this, you sort of expect there to be more or less equal parts of prefixes and suffixes, seeing how the entire language is built on this. But no, Greenlandic is pretty much exclusively suffixing, save for a single highly limited and fossilized demonstrative prefix, ta. Other than this single prefix, there's estimated to be around 320 inflectional suffixes and around four to 500 derivational suffixes. And as you can imagine, this leads to some single, whole, long-ass sentence words, such as this monstrosity right here, for example. By the way, on docs, when writing the script for the video, at a normal size 12 times New Roman, which is the only acceptable font and size I will die in this hill, Greenlandic takes just over a line and a half, while English takes over three lines. So which language is more time-conserving and more efficient space-wise? I don't know, you tell me. Moving on to what ergative absolutive means. I give a pretty thorough explanation in my video on the Keras language, which starts exactly at minute 11, so be sure to check that out. But in incredibly simple terms, there are two types of sentences, transitive and intransitive. A transitive sentence has a subject, a verb, and an object, and an intransitive sentence only has a subject and a verb. In nominative accusative languages such as English, and like 99% of all other European languages, the subject of an intransitive sentence behaves like the subject of a transitive sentence because they're both subjects and it doesn't matter. So they're both in the nominative case. Again, because they're both subjects and they're both performing the action of the verb regardless of whether there's an object there or not. In ergative absolutive languages, the subject of an intransitive sentence behaves like the object of a transitive sentence because in their logic, the subject of an intransitive sentence is being performed upon by the verb instead, because there's no object there, sort of. Personally, this is very unintuitive for me, and it definitely takes some time getting your brain used to this twist. Um, again, if you want a more thorough explanation with a clear example, check out my video on Keras. And the third thing is that Greenlandic lacks a system of grammatical tense. So in order to express temporal relations, well, there are some optional derivational suffixes that do help, for the most part, it's done through context, using words such as now and yesterday. When you look at languages such as English, Spanish, and French, for example, each with a very rich system of grammatical tense, having like 10 different presents, 5 different futures, 17 different pasts, and so on, now imagine just none of that, and instead a whole nother complex grammatical system that is used to communicate in the same way as you, with all the nuances, except in a very different and alien to you, or to me, Way. What else, what else, what else? Oh yeah, Greenlandic has an SOV word order. Four persons, first, second, third, and fourth, a thing called obviation, but don't worry about it. Um, it also has two numbers, thankfully, only singular and plural, so no dual, like nuptitut has, for example. It also has eight moods and eight grammatical cases. That's the thing about learning languages that are completely unrelated to any language family that you're familiar with. You encounter some weird grammatical construction, you learn it, you think you're starting to get the hang of it, but you've just cleared one rock from the road and instead a whole new massive grammatical rock slide comes crashing onto you. Anyway, let's all watch my poor attempt at speaking this fascinating language.
קלאשי סוט או קלוטה, וואלי סיור לוארנה, שוני מיק אתה קורפונגה, אמה אנגו טרבונגה, קוטה או קאצית אתו רומינה צו רויו סוויט, קלאה ליופוט, ניפרפס סוויט אתו רומינה צוט, נלוארה, פקצי וונגה קרסו וונגה לו כיסייני אסברה אטרסק מרשיוק פנגסות סיסמת תשימת ארפינשית ארפינק מרשיוק ארפינק פנגסות קולין גילואט קולית הלו אב נעמיק אפרילה ארשנגה תקנה קויין ארשיו ביי קלאשית נוננו קרומה תמנות או קלו טוארי סברה, אחי נרוסומיק, או קלו לארית, פאסינגילרה, ספאתי אקונראטה, נאנרני, סוסמרפית, תחימן גורנרמי, ונוקוט קמלת איקשו, איקשו קרפיליה סמרפוגות אילה רוסופית, נא לערבית קרויאגית. קוקו נרית, אמר שלעשות, אמר שלעשות. אינו שלוארית. קוקלי, a little disclaimer. So I've been polishing up on my Greenlandic over the last two weeks leading up to the release of the video. So I've more or less followed my own rules, save for the fact that I took a five month long break in between. Again, sorry about that. Um, but still, I just want to quickly reiterate that I do not claim to be fluent in any way. nor would I even count Greenlandic as a language I speak even basically. Though a small part of me does want to continue studying it because it's just so unique in my eyes. Um, but I just do this for fun. I just love memorizing and pronouncing words in languages that I don't understand. The more difficult, the better. I've always had this dream of one day moving somewhere super far north to the Arctic to a small random inlet or village for a period of time where people still speak the indigenous language day to day and just fully immersing myself in the language and culture. And if, if any Inuit or Greenlandic family out there is watching and you need help with physical labor for a season and can provide accommodation, hit me up, let's work something out. Maybe one day, but for now, we gotta wrap up this video. Now, despite the amazing level of success that Greenlandic people have had over the past several decades in revitalizing their language and giving it a much more central and important role, it isn't immune to all the things that plague lesser used languages the world over. There are only about 55,000 total speakers, which really is a tiny amount on the global scale. Furthermore, while instruction in schools, particularly in primary and middle schools, is primarily in Greenlandic, once you get to high school, most teachers are Danish, textbooks aren't always translated, and there aren't that many opportunities for further education, aside from the one university. So most of the young people learn either Danish or English and then move to Denmark or elsewhere. Still though, it seems like Greenlandic is one of the more stable small languages, with plenty of efforts underway to strengthen it, and still plenty of people very much interested in continuing to speak it. And to all Greenlanders out there, I wish you all nothing but the very best. May your language and culture stay alive and thrive for many generations to come. Also really quickly, I just want to share some final thoughts regarding the sources that I used to learn Greenlandic for the video. So first of all, there's a source called An Introduction to West Greenlandic, written by this person, who's an absolute legend, and I'm so, so sorry, I have no idea how to correctly pronounce their name. There are too many possibilities, and I don't want to butcher it. But it's an incredibly comprehensive guide to everything Greenlandic in terms of grammar and sentence building, and is perfect for absolute beginners. I'm going to leave a link in the video description below to a website uh, of resources on the West Greenlandic language, which includes a link to a PDF of the book, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Another thing is I want to give a big shout out to Tulungwak and his incredible Tumblr page. He actually helped me go over some of the things that I said in my speaking demonstration to make sure that it's correct. Um, and if you're watching this, I know that I didn't send everything over, so I probably made a lot more mistakes, but I kind of just wanted to try out the whole sentence building thing myself and then just get judged by the audience as it is. Um, but either way, please go check out his page. It's also an incredibly comprehensive guide to everything Greenlandic, and it's an incredibly fun read as well. And lastly, thank you so much to Utalk for providing me with access to the Greenlandic tree. 
It would have been so much more difficult studying this language without this incredible app. Link in the description below. Also, again, really quickly, I apologize for being so inconsistent and taking so long to upload anything. It's just life, am I right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna get better, I promise. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. There's a million links in the video description below. Have a great day and a wonderful night. See you some point in the future, hopefully soon. Peace out. Na luna ra suarta terra rangua lioka tigi fisua lioria ta siakri supilo ruyu suangortar tui naka singortinia mi salingua sira lua siakok iga mingamia singok.